Okay. Um, that our first activity has to do with issuing shares. And just to make sure the terminology, we understand that we're issuing uh, common shares. We say they're issued in an IPO. IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. That's what we call it when a company issues stock um, to you know the outsiders for the first time. And I say we're going to issue these shares for $10 a share. That means the outsiders that want to buy a share have to pay $10 for each one. This very first big paragraph is an explanation of what par value is. Par value is a term we're going to use in Chapter 18. So, um, you know, read through this paragraph and uh, just to kind of get the intuition. Um, it has a historical reference, uh, par value, but nowadays, um, here's kind of the key, it's set extremely low in the corporate charter, so it's basically if a state requires it. It's usually fractions of a penny per share, like point zero 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 one um, dollar per share. You know, For bookkeeping purposes, we always keep the par value of the stock separate from the amount of capital raised beyond par value. And when it says what account are we going to use to capture the par value of stock times the number of shares, this is what's going to always be going into our common stock. Our common stock account. Okay, so when you see common stock, if a company has a uh, par value, that common stock value is always equal to the par value times the number of shares. So what account do we use to capture that excess of the initial stock price offered to the public over the par value? So for example, um, you know, these we're offering our shares at $10 a share. We'll see if our par value is a dollar. That means we would get the par value from everybody, a dollar, but we're also getting nine more dollars. So this question is asking, um, what do you do? What account would you use to capture that excess of the cash over the par value? And we're going to use an account called additional paid in capital common. Okay, now in this chapter, we're going to see a lot of different accounts that we start off with calling paid-in capital. Uh, that's capitals contributed to the company from the sh uh, shareholders. So we're going to see a lot of different accounts. Um, usually in the real world, they get rolled up in the uh, presentation on the balance sheet into one, but we will have different ones in our general ledger. So this is the first one, I guess. This is going to be an account. It's going to have a credit balance or a zero. But um, that's the account that captures the excess. So it says, how is this? So then the rest of this activity is just asking you to do some journal entries based on the information. So that's 20,000 shares at $10 a share. And question three says, how would you record this IPO if the par value is a dollar? Well, first thing, we know we issued the shares for uh, $10. So let's see, I'm going to just put it over here, I think. For number three, we know we're going to get cash for 20000 times 10. So we know our debit to cash is going to be for 200000 We know that makes assets go up. Now, uh, we've issued shares, and they have a dollar par value. Well, we just talked about the fact that that goes in the common stock account. And it's going to go in the common stock account at $20 per share. So that's 20000 into common stock, which is owner's equity going up. And then we said we're going to put the rest of it, we just answered this in question two, in an account called additional paid-in capital. So that would be whatever's left, 180000 which makes sense because we issued those shares at $20,000. I'm sorry, at $10 a share, 20,000 shares at $10 a share. 
A dollar went to par, nine dollars went to paid in capital. So nine dollars times twenty thousand is that hundred and eighty. So this would be the record shares issue. If I could write there we go. Okay, so that's the very basic um, entry for recording shares issued. All right, so question number four says, what if, how would you record it if it was no par value? So if, we'd re if we had incorporated in a state that had no par value stock, we would still have gotten 200,000. But we don't have a par value, so everything would go to the common stock account. How easy is that? 200, I'm just going to abbreviate 200,000 there. I'll make it that I'll make it look like it's the same entry just to keep your accounting sensibilities making sense okay so there's no par value would be much uh, simpler wouldn't it and then number five says uh, sometimes states use um, stated value instead of par value but it means the same thing so then I say how would your entry look if the stock had a 0.01, that's a one penny stated value. So again, your cash is going to go up by the same amount. You're still issuing the shares for $10 a share. Now here you just treat stated value just like par value. So we're going to credit common stock. But here it's going to be for one penny for 2,000 or 20,000 shares. So that is actually going to be $200. And this is what happens um, in the real world, in a real 10K. Because the company set those par values so tiny, oftentimes when you look at a balance sheet, you will see the account common stock listed on the balance sheet, but you'll see a zero. And the reason you see a zero on the balance sheet for common stock is not because they don't have any common stock. It's because their statements might be in millions and they don't have a par value big enough to make their common stock balance round up to one. Okay, so it rounds to zero in their financial statements. So just, you know, rest assured, they have a, a general ledger account somewhere. It's just the presentation on the... 10K, it might show us a zero. All right, so here we're going to use the additional paid in capital just like we did above to capture the rest. And so this time the rest is 199800 Okay, so there's activity one. Three different ways you might see shares issued um, to start us off. Okay, so that's the basic idea of par value is it's very small. And the par value times the number of shares is what goes on the balance sheet for common stock. All right. Then there's a quiz. And it's just going to reinforce your answers to your questions that you have there. Now we're at Activity 2. In Activity 2, we've actually seen this entry before. Um, I actually say that in number one. We've seen this uh, entry in chapter 10. If we don't have a value given for the stock, what are we? What value are we going to use? And this is just to make you remember. Um, this is a rule that we saw back in chapter 10. It still holds. We use the we use the fair value of the asset. Or, or fair value of stock. And our rule was we use whichever is more clearly evident. rule. So in this situation, we're going to use the fair value of the asset because I didn't give I told you the shares aren't actively traded. That's another way of telling you we don't have a fair value for the shares. Okay? But we do know the equipment had a fair value of 50,000. 
So how is this exchange recorded if the par value is a dollar? All right, first things first, I'm going to put in my common stock because the theme of this uh, at night's activities is that par value times the number of shares goes in the common stock account. Right, so there's my common stock for 10,000. All right, we got equipment in exchange for this stock. Since we don't have a fair value for the stock, we're going to use the fair value of the equipment, so 50,000. And then the rest of the journal entry is just making it balance. Okay, so there's those same in accounts we saw on the last slide, except we have an equipment account instead of a cash account. And so this is going to go to the difference. So this is to record shares issued. Change. You don't have to go back and look in your Chapter 10 notes, but if you did, you would, I think, see the same entry. All right, so there we go. It's pretty straightforward, right? Again, this big idea of the night uh, or of the class is that the common stock is the par value times the number of shares. All right, there's no quiz. Here's our rule. Use the fair value of the asset or the fair value stock, whichever is more clearly evident. And there's just answers that tell you if you got it right. All right, so this um, activity brings in the idea of um, equity issue cost. We talked about debt issue cost in Chapter um, 14. Now we're in Chapter 18 dealing with issuing shares, and we understand it makes sense of this. You're gonna, it's going to cost you some money to make this happen, right? To make the sale happen, it's going to cost us $2 million. So um, we've issued 15 million shares for $1 par. We issued it for $424 million. And then beyond the $424 million, we had to pay out $2 million um, for legal promotional accounting services. So... Let's think about, and now this is where I ask you, you know, you can look in your readings and see. But to start with the uh, theme of the night, you know what's going to get recorded for common stock. Owner's equity going up, right? It's going to be a dollar times the par value. I'm sorry, a dollar is the par value. A dollar par value times the number of shares. So that is going to be a credit for $15 million. That's the thing you know. Always start with the thing you know. You know you're going to get cash. Okay, and you know you're going to have additional paid-in capital. And basically, the idea here is we're going to treat these debt, these equity issue costs, the same way we're going to we treated our debt equity, ugh, our debt issue cost, which is we're just going to reduce the cash that we received by the amount of those costs. And you could do this in two entries, and record uh, a credit to cash for two million. And the other side of your entry would be a debit to additional paid in capital common or you could combine it and do uh, do it all in one entry and just record the um, common stock at par value like you always do and then record the cash that you received there that journal entry is going to balance now um, and you see it's, uh, I guess I would say it's the same treatment, basically. Chapter 14, we reduced the cash and we reduced the, um, like the premium on the bonds. Uh, in Chapter 18, we're reducing cash and we're reducing the additional paid in capital. So, very, very similar treatment. Okay, so that's just Get an activity to make sure we cover what we do with those extra costs. So what we did not do, 
notice, we did not record these as expenses, right? We just took them out up front. Okay.